Hey everyone, so today I just want to primarily give you a couple details about the current drought that the majority of the country is in and kind of compare it to the 1930s, the Dust Bowl area, so to say, drought. And a lot of the researchers and scientists and meteorologists are comparing now this year's drought with the Dust Bowl and seeing if they can try to find any comparisons, um, similarities, and differences between the two. And they have found a couple things. Uh, first thing to mention about uh, um, the a similarity between the Dust Bowl and this year is that the areas that were affected during the Dust Bowl are affected again this year. So the Southern Plains into uh, the like Missouri, Illinois area, Iowa, Nebraska, uh, those places in general saw the worst of the Dust Bowl in the 30s and again are seeing the worst conditions right now in the nation for this year 2012. And that's one of the big similarities that meteorologists are finding with this current drought. One of the differences and it's a major difference between this drought and the 30s drought is that it this one just like started. It's been going on for several months but it's been getting progressively worse unfortunately. I do know that last week when the drought monitor came out about I think it was around 60% of the country was in a moderate drought this week I think that went up to like 62 or 63 percent so more of the country is experiencing uh, drought conditions and just not having as much rainfall as we're supposed to have during this time of year but one of the bigger differences is that in the 30s especially 1936 was the big year for the Dust Bowl, that's when like the majority of like the famine happened and crops just died and people were unemployed and farms were just abandoned and food was you know short and there was water shortages and everything and prices at the um, food market and stuff went up. The thing about the 1930s is that it prolonged over like several years. It wasn't just like one summer. And so far, it, this is kind of just like now. It hasn't been going on for like the past two, three years. We've just been seeing this now. However, it has been coming up pretty quickly. Um, and hopefully we can get some relief into these drought-stricken areas. Unfortunately, though, because it is the middle of the summertime, we do usually see a high area of pressure build over the plains and eastern parts of the country. And that unfortunately has storm systems coming up and over the country, so going more into Canada and then dipping down sometimes into New England and the Mid Atlantic states. So the middle, the heartland, doesn't really get to see a lot of precipitation action during the summer months unless there's a tropical entity that comes up, or if a cold front or a trough builds in and we bring some cooler, unsettled weather. So far, for the almost past like month now it seems that we've just seen this high pressure either stay in the middle of the heartland or just like slide east and like slide back west and stuff so it's been kind of going like back and forth and it's supposed to keep going for another week or so that's what the computer models are saying um and it, so it is going to go into august so places like texas into almost all the way up into like the dakotas this week today is july 20th so this upcoming week we're going to have triple digit readings again and no rain. It's just going to be sun or just a few clouds, but no rain, unfortunately. So not good for crops, obviously. Um, corn, corn is like 32% in like poor, very poor condition. And 30% of soybeans is in poor, very poor condition. And that's up from last week's report. So it's getting worse, unfortunately. But again, over the next week, we're going to see triple digit heat in the middle of the country and kind of spreading over into the Ohio River, Mississippi, and Tennessee River Valleys. Um, St. Louis is supposed to hit 100 degrees, I think, early next week. I don't think Chicago is going to hit 100 degrees, but they're going to be pretty close, mid to upper 90s. And then we are going to have some of the 90s spread even over into the mid-Atlantic again. Places like D.C., Baltimore, Philly, New York, you'll be in the 90s again next week. Southeast, however, it is going to stay unsettled and a bit wet. We do have a stalled out front across the southeast Mississippi over into the Carolinas, and that's bringing some showers and thunderstorms. So it is helping out with the drought 
a little bit down there. However, that is supposed to weaken, the stationary front is supposed to weaken, and once it breaks down, we are going to have sun come back out, and we are going to have the temperatures rebound. So I know like Atlanta, Georgia was in like the 80s today and like tomorrow, and DC is supposed to be like 90 tomorrow, but that's because we're supposed to get out of the um, the front scenario, and Atlanta is supposed to stay in an unsettled pattern for like another couple of days. But once Atlanta gets out of the uh, front and stuff, once that front weakens, Atlanta will rebound into the 90s, more typical for, for them this time of year. But again, a lot of a lot of things that researchers and meteorologists have been seeing is that the drought in the 1930s, the Dust Bowl again, was prolonged over like five years. This is just the beginning of what could be a, another like Dust Bowl like era or something. Hopefully not because we have a lot more people in the country and a lot more demand for food and water and stuff. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, so that's like one of the big things that they are looking at is that this is just the beginning and hopefully when we get into the fall season and winter season we have some more storm systems come in and just kind of relieve people of the drought. But unfortunately for the next like couple of weeks we are going to be stuck under high pressure for the heartland and mid-Atlantic states and it's just going to be hot with triple digit readings. And again with the 1930 error we had soil that was pretty much very dry and powdery for a long period of time which obviously created the the dust and stuff that's why it was called like the dust bowl because we had strong winds accompanied by just the um the dryness of the soil and stuff so it kicked up a lot of dust and it just moved dust all the way around um it was like in texas oklahoma and like kansas those places that's where like the worst of it was and we're not seeing that right now and so it's not as bad as the dust bowl from the 1930s but again, it's a noticeable drought, and it is a severe drought, um, and about the same percentage of the country, or even a little bit more of the um, country, is in like a moderate to severe drought compared to the 1930s. So, like 62% is in a moderate drought right now. Like in the 1930s, it was probably around, right, right around like 59, 60%. I don't know the actual numbers, I'm just saying that that's what I'm trying to say when um, I'm saying that... Uh, um, Oh, what was I? <laughs> I don't know. Um, saying that the like the current stage of like the drought is a little bit more severe than if you saw like a report coming out in the 1930s. Just this isn't as prolonged as it was in the 1930s because this is only happening over a course of like six, seven months, and the Dust Bowl happened over the course of five, six years. So it's not as bad as what some people are thinking, but again, it is pretty bad. And unfortunately, with not a lot of corn and like soybeans and anything, just prices at the food market are going to go up, unfortunately. So getting corn this late fall, uh, August into September, you're going to be paying more uh, definitely when you go and buy it and stuff. So that's what I pretty much just wanted to talk about. Just like uh, compare, um, just compare this year's to the 1930s and stuff, um, and and yeah, so that's pretty much it. What I want to talk about, and again, I did give you the forecast for the next week and stuff. Again, hot and dry uh, for the eastern two thirds of the nation. The west also has been dealing with a lot of dry and hot conditions. Just it isn't as humid as it is. Oh, obviously, over into the eastern part of the country. Obviously, with the desert and stuff, they have dry heat. So even though it's 110, it probably feels like 80, 85 degrees. So it probably doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to die. Um, the Northwest has, uh, it's been like off and on, like with rain and sunshine and stuff. That's going to continue up there and stuff. And then over into New England, we are expected to actually warm up again. And places like Boston and going into Portland will be in the 80s again by the beginning of next week with sunny conditions. Um, but again, that's pretty much it for like any precipitation. Not a whole lot of precipitation, unfortunately, uh, coming in for the country just because we have this big dominant high pressure just sitting over us like it usually does during this time. Um, and hopefully it can just break down. We can get some cooler air from Canada or something. I don't know. We gotta call our, we gotta call Canadian friends and be like, please, like, bring us relief. Oh, 
you know, just call up your, I don't know, call Winnipeg or Toronto or whatever, Montreal, and be like, can you please send cool air down? We need it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so, with that being said, uh, you can also check out the heat wave video that I posted up a couple days ago, or I think it was a week ago. I can't really remember. But um, I also talked about some of the drought and heat uh, related stuff in that video as well. Um, and then at the end of this month, so in probably about a week, I'm going to bring out the August forecast and hopefully it's not as bad as July with all the heat and dry this has been going on. Hopefully we can get some relief uh, into the drought-stricken areas. Until next time, remember to keep your eye to the sky.